Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Shit right there. Oh, oh this the is one of the, <laughs> the biggest days of our lives. <laughs> this, I, I am, I am, I am befuddled. You are like, befuddled. I'm, that's I'm a big word up. for you. Like I, that's a befuddled. big word for you. Any yeah. word with more than two syllables for befuddled. this piece of shit is like. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Lemmy is here. Hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> yeah, hey, what's up, motherfuckers? You already know me. What's up? <laughs> here, here's the thing. I was wondering if the mustache was real. Yeah. One, uh, two. If you would have it still in real life. Yeah. Both are true. They're both true. Let me ask My you this: God, Is that man. part of the of a character, or is that just like how you roll? Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. This is part of my character. Okay. It, yeah. it looks good. I love that that's, fucking mustache. So that's the thing. So pre-show, we were talking about this. I'm a big mustache guy, right? Yeah. Four to five months out of the year, I have it for real. There's no games with it except for Dan. When I, when I lost that bet to you in Oregon uh, for Steve Prefontaine, yep. and I had that, and I had to dye it black. But I actually like it dyed black. Yeah. Uh, like I was a big fan of that. Yeah. Um, I've my, had my mustache dyed darker. Yeah. And I like it. So, so do I. I like yeah, it. Yeah, but is it really a character yes. or have you just started living the character? Because, I mean, I feel like it's kind of like my life, you know? <laughs> We've created my character, but now that's just me. No, or it wasn't no, 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 me, no. and then yeah. we just... You're a fat piece of shit, and you're retarded, <laughs> and that's just how this is all gone. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Then maybe I was off. It just happened. <laughs> it happened. Because if you look at him, you, you probably look... At, like It looks like a child cut his hair in the back. Um, but then, you know, you look at somebody like me and you're like, dude, I don't understand why this guy has a blonde mullet. Obviously I'm living my, my best life and I'm going for something different. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm living the summer of Swayze where I'm going Bodie all summer thoughts on that real quick. Uh, all right. Peace. It's dangerous. By the way. It's dangerous. Yeah. I go peace ways. Um, <laughs> peace ways. Well, you know? I'm crazy for Swayze. I'm crazy for Swayze. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is it? Yeah. Did you see his guest spot on squid billies? Oh um, yeah, the uh, I love that episode. <laughs> it's You're the, the only fact that he knows script. Holy Billies. shit! It's dude. on like Michelle Kwan. Adult <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, Michelle Kwan. Yes, yes. it's on oh, like God. Michelle <laughs> Kwan. Oh yeah, I can this see her tiny Asian ear. body spinning right now oh, as yeah. he said it. Followed hey, up with a simile board. And a few cold beers. <laughs> a few cold beers. <laughs> oh yeah, no, look, I, I actually love that. Uh, it's my way or the highway. I love that oh, episode no, 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 of Squid Billies. It's amazing. And uh, I am shit. Patrick Sweezy. Yeah. <laughs> My wife and I used to lay in bed and just watch Adult Swim. Oh, oh that's the best. Again. So do yeah. we. So, so yes. me and my wife, we're big Eric Andre fans. Okay. So like yeah. the Eric Andre show, you know it's getting as fucked up as you could possibly. Yeah. Well, I haven't watched go. now in a, in a couple of years. Now, yeah, I, I, hey, you don't need to. Yeah. I'm going to give you a quick heads up here, a quick spoiler alert. Yeah. Still the same. Okay. <laughs> Good. I have to get back in touch with my Adult Swim. Yeah, so do I. I the weird thing is, and we'll, and we'll talk about your TV show in a second, is we, we had a meeting with them for another TV show recently, and the numbers on Adult Swim were really low, surprisingly, where they were like, hey, if you get 350,000 viewers, that's a great night. And it was like, yeah. shit, our podcast goes out to four and a half million listeners. That's a tough one to swallow. Your new show is on True TV. Yeah. Those guys are pulling decent numbers with like in, in Practical Jokers and stuff in, like Practical that. Practical Jokers is actually the number one TV show on, uh, on, on basic cable. cable. Yeah. yeah. Did it, that one start on YouTube or something? No, yeah. it started actually it's uh, the New York uh, Television Festival. Okay. Um, and the guys won a contest actually. Mm. Uh, su- surprisingly enough, but where were they publishing before it went to True? They, they just New York. They like those really? guys were just out of New York, and they entered in this pilot competition, like on Yes or Public Access or some shit. What was it? No, it, they, they entered. I mean, they literally entered a pilot inside of a pilot competition where it was just like, "Hey," and then True TV was there. They picked up the show, and it was they're all best friends in real life, and yeah. then do that. Is your story similar to that? Were you guys all best friends? Yeah, we went to college together. We went to Colgate University together. You went to Colgate? Colgate. Yeah. Oh. You Where is that? Fucker. A Hamilton, uh, it's uh, Central New York. Okay. Okay. We nice. just talked about this the other day. We so did, yeah. I, I, You're super butthurt you didn't get in. I am. I, I got a scholarship oh, offer for football there. Oh, my, wow. My ACTs were terrible. Okay. And I was going to go. That yeah. school is gorgeous. I Great really campus. Couldn't uh, the theater program was one of the finest from what I heard, right? Uh, well, the, you've got some bad information there. I did. Well, they don't even have uh, a theater major. No way. They have uh, a theater minor. Yeah, yeah, the, the minor. Yes. And uh, when we were, that's actually how uh, Broken Lizard got started. Was that uh, the student theater there was was dare I say terrible? 
And uh, I don't want to insult anybody. It was, but the anybody. brochures look so cool. Oh, so the that's brochures not true? are great. No, the brochures are great. <laughs> the brochure, the, the campus is beautiful. It is, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a gorgeous place and a great school, great academics. But the theater, they just didn't focus on theater. And so uh, they were putting on like one play a semester. And, you know, kids would go there on the opening night, like 30 kids would go. And then the second night would be like 20 kids. And by the last night, it was like five people would show up to see their friends and you'd leave it, you know. This makes me feel so much better about my decision now. Because <laughs> yeah. in the brochure, you're like, What are you oh talking God. about? You would have been there the same year as these guys. I know. What, when, when, what year were you there? Uh, I uh, graduated in 91, although I didn't actually graduate. But I'm, oh. class, of, I'm class of 91. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to feel terrible. I was, I'm a few summers after you guys. So. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, because if I would have missed that on this, yeah. then Could it's you like, imagine? oh, He's hey, like, the, oh, the kids been that ahead year, of you, like, yeah. Yeah, the broken lizard guys were ahead of you. Who'd I end up with? One-legged fucking Eddie, you know, who went on to... <laughs> yeah, although we have a one-legged guy in Broken Lizard. Oh, do you? Yeah. We have one in uh, Drinking Bros, so it's Derek White, so we're even. Well, okay. we have two. Yeah, Derek we have Crispy, Crispy, too. Crispy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but Crispy's the, the, the brown version of Derek. Correct. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So wait, but you he doesn't two? have face tattoos. Like yeah. No, yes. We've but got... you got two one-legged guys? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. So Derek was in my unit in the 82nd Airborne, and he served with us back yep. in yeah. the day. So and he, got, his, he lost his leg on I mean, a mission. You there. served with Omar with Crispy, too. Yeah, I ended up being there when he got hurt, too. We were all deployed somehow. the same. We didn't know this until literally last year. Yeah, last year, yeah. Like, like that, that happened. I started telling uh, Omar a story about when I had first arrived at a certain base with a unit, and he was like, "That vehicle was mine. <laughs> that was me getting fucked up." I was yeah. like, oh, "Oh wow, shit!" <laughs> yeah. And then at a, at a live show last year in Las Vegas for Shot Show, uh, one of Jared's friends from Nitro Circus drank, I believe it was three beers out of yeah, that was three Tommy, prosthetic yeah. leg on go. stage, yeah. where yeah. it was just. Man, and this was his debut night to become a DJ. We were we, after our live show at the MGM, like massive crowd, super fun. We're like Street Bike Tommy, you're gonna you're gonna DJ. As soon as we finish the show and point to Tommy, he's sleeping in the DJ booth, just <laughs> yeah. full passed out. Yeah, he blacked out. Oh, that's fine. He woke up at like three a.m. and started calling people. Where, you, where uh, the fuck would you like? guys be willing to come out to Maryland and hang out with the Nitro guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your one legger, by the way? Uh, Eric Stolhansky. Okay. He, he has he has one leg. His his situation was different. Although he tells great stories. Like back when we were in college, you know, people would see like our sophomore year, we'd moved in the fraternity house and uh, uh, which fraternity? Uh, beta, Theta Pi. Okay, cool. And uh, people were just getting to know each other, and they would see that like his foot, because you know he had a really good looking foot. You know, they make it with like veins and some hair yeah, and yeah, some yeah. like toenails. And I've shit. got a fake dick just like that. Oh, yep. you do? Yeah. 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 Toenails veins. in your dick? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, it's Dan, like a Dan claw. didn't lose his dick in war, though. It no, was I just got in, an extra uh, dick. Yep. No, it, it was a microwave door accident. That yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. You slam those things too hey, fast. You know? yeah. Pizza bagels are a hell of a drug. <laughs> they are. That's right. Well, they they got that nice little center, the warm center. You know, uh, you got to use the other one. You can ease it right in. So it was painted on? Uh,. The leg? No, no, but like the color was. The just prosthetic was nice. The prosthetic was nice. He's got an even better one now. But like, uh, but back then we would do all that. Like uh, at dinner time, he would stand up. He'd say, "All right, leg chugs in my room after dinner," and we would just go and pound beers out of his uh, shower leg. And like, uh, uh, and he. So was, we're not hey. the only assholes doing this. <laughs> Thank yeah. God. Thank and, God. And he would fuck with people. Like he would. Uh, people. We had a real sensitive guy. In our fraternity, who was like he was in the in the and by sensitive, I just mean sensitive. You know, he was sure he, not he was, gay. No, he was just okay. sensitive, and he was in the men's uh, choir at uh, at so Colgate. a little gay then. And uh, and he We're had like a you know he was gay. the soprano are, yeah. or I guess the what, what uh, what's the alto is that no no I don't know no a tenor tenor, tenor? tenor but he was right. more of a soprano. tenor is the middle high? soprano was it high or low he the highest oh the highest what's, yeah. what he that? would sing way up here I think that's a tenor. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a tenor. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the three tenors. Yeah, ba- yeah. Bass, like a Freddie yeah. Mercury like ba- size tenor. Is why I'm a natural baritone. Yeah, I'm a yeah, baritone. no, natural, relax, relax, relax. Relax. natural. But he was relax. more like a soprano. I'm telling you, like he was up here. <laughs> okay, real sensitive. And he walked into the shower, you know, and, and Stolhansky had a towel around his leg, and you couldn't see the knee joint. And he was like, "Oh, um, what's up with your foot? It's uh, it's slightly, it's kind of yellow." And Stolhansky was like, yeah, I don't know. And just turned around and kicked the porcelain, you know, the, like the tile wall of the bathroom as hard as he could with his bare toes. And uh, our friend, our sensitive friend just vomited on the spot because <laughs> no it looked way. so painful to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> for you to get a sensitive friend to vomit, yeah, 
big move. That's a like power that. move. That is. That is Cause a you can hold move. that over That's them big forever. Big dick energy, energy right yeah. there. Yeah, that is big dick we, energy. So uh, we were working on a song for one of our one legged buddies called "A Little Less AIDS" because mm-hmm. our premise is that he has AIDS, but he has a little less because he's missing a leg. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that look that takes That's off about science thirty percent of your AIDS. Because you know, he's leg. got a big leg. I'm, now I'm, with 30% maybe, less AIDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Got, a, he's got a big maybe leg. Maybe we should yeah. go 30% less AIDS. You don't know me. how much a leg weighs until you have sex with a girl missing a leg. Uh, you and ask? you realize. <laughs> Steve, you want to ask him about that? Uh, have you had sex with a girl? No, I've just heard about it. Okay. No, you have. Yeah, no, I've just heard you about it. You took the fucking leg off. No, I didn't. Yes, I've heard the story, heard by it. the way. I just heard where, what, uh Where did the leg disconnect? At the knee joint? It was above the knee. So she had the knee joint? No. Oh, she no, didn't have the, the knee joint. Above the knee. And then how yeah. close to the... I mean... It was how close to the vagina? Mid-thigh. 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 Okay, But I mean, cool. there's so you just can a go... lot of weight there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of weight there. Yeah, the leg's all bone and muscle. There's no bullshit. You there. must yeah. be able to go deep on something like that. He, that's, that's exactly what you told me. <laughs> you can you spin You fucking son of a bitch. Yeah. You should tell him. This is our guest. You should tell him. You said the maneuverability inside of that was No, it's just the weight. Something that's what you like noticed first. You, you, noticed. you also didn't have to clear the brush. You didn't have to get anything out of the road. The brush. You were able just to drive straight, man. Life is a highway. That's what fucking Tom Cochran said. That's true. That's yeah. There's no... There's no angle that you can't get in on. <laughs> there like there isn't. Can, yeah. No, I think I think you go next level if you go uh, no legs. That's a that's a whole different story. Mm. I'd do that. Yeah. You I would? Think, I don't think I could. What do you mean? That's too what, much. Yeah, you would. Of course, I would. Yeah. Yeah. What, Dan doesn't care about what if life. what if Adrian? What if you weren't married and Adriana Lima lost her legs? Oh and, man! And it was like Ross, I want you to fuck me so deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's I, how I, she would say it too. By the way, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Exactly. He would definitely go straight to the spin move. It, like I'm going to make you a top, like <laughs> Harlem Globetrotter style, like spinning her. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I feel bad sharing this story, and if she does watch this show and she's out there, Adriana for, Lima, forgive me. There was a there was a girl who w- worked at this barbershop we went to in, in college, right? Yeah. Gorgeous, kind of looked like Adriana Lima. Yeah, uh, fell asleep at a party on a bean, one of those beanbag chairs, mm-hmm. uh, on her legs. Yeah, Molly, the whole I mean, Xanax out of her mind. She said she had just slept for 18 hours, lost the circulation in her legs, and had both of her legs cut off after that. Wow, dude, oh my god, from a beanbag, yes, dude. So, th- we need to ban beanbags. This was the hot girl in college that everybody tried dude. to sleep with, but who was unachievable. Because she was like, dude, I'm 25. I run this salon. Like, you guys are fucking chads and, and idiots. Right. Get out of here. And Not I was now. just like, all right, cool. Yeah. So cut to five years after college. Then this girl, re- like, she reappears online and Facebook. And it's all these amputation videos and her in the, in the wheelchair and everything and whatever. And it was just like that question was posed to me of like, hey. Now, like, that you probably have a shot. Would you go back and do- I could I, No, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I felt bad that you she lost her legs. You fucking asshole. Oh, he yeah. didn't feel He's bad. He's super This is all about, you asshole. It's bad. all about him not wanting to be seen rolling her into dinner. It's not that at <laughs> all. Yeah. It's all about all your fucking that. ego. No, yeah, it's not. it is. Because that it's part like, makes you a hero. Like, you roll in and everybody in the restaurant, everybody in the <laughs> yeah. restaurant getting shunned, bitch. Gives you a round how, of applause. How do you okay. stomach this? How I do you? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How have it's you like, guys not walked off this podcast? <laughs> we do right now. We do <laughs> on a regular basis. Bert Coots, how can we you be married to this listen man? Listen to that. We've only been in fifteen minutes, and you've already turned him into Bert Coots. I look. I will I, walk I off this not, motherfucker. But here's the thing: you do think about that. Of like, look, don't if, touch me. If I wheel, <laughs> don't touch my don't true fucking TV. Touch me, <laughs> jacket. If you wheel them into the restaurant, the hero looks you get. You think about that too, where you're just like, "Oh my gosh, they're gonna think that I'm a real gentleman." You know, you know, you could know? step. No, up. they're gonna think it's your sister first, Pro- probably. <laughs> yeah, but who? You, I mean, that's you, fucking bastard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, fucking. Yeah. You're the only decent person. <laughs> You're the only decent person. That's actually person. true. He would never take her to dinner because she wouldn't leave his house. He'd ever mounted on a fucking swing system. Yes. Yeah. Good. That's yeah. what he's into. Good. <laughs> He'd yeah. be making love to her and treating her like the beautiful woman that she is. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I, and I then she would stab me to death at some point because every woman I date ends up trying to kill me. Yeah. So do you have right. a, let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you have a friend like this? Because he's our friend who he only dates the craziest girls on the planet. If yeah. there's not 
a, an attempt at murder at some point during the like relationship. Like in the hot crazy matrix, he is hanging out in that top right corner. He can't okay. get off. He can't get off unless there's a there's an element of like she might wake up and stab him. Do you have one of those friends like, like in like, the group? Like like we're talking like like third date. She shows up with a tattoo of his name. Yes, that's or, um, that's hyperbole, but <laughs> no, but that happened to another one of our co-hosts. So yeah, that's true. I'm yeah, not going to say who it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, but 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 it did happen. A girl tattooed yeah his name on there. You know, yeah, yeah. There's there's plenty of crazy people out there. Yeah. There are crazy people. Um, out Li- there. I feel like life is really boring. Well, it's a yeah, highway well, too. You know, but. That's so. Really, the answer is I, I'm that guy in in uh, in Broken Lizard. Well, are you really? Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Where it's like that's why he called because it, it was funny to me when he said that I was the only decent human being here. That's which right. is I'm a, he's, he's I'm realizing the, the two I'm of you the biggest bags. piece of shit here. Yeah, for yeah. sure. No, so, no. But there's like, uh, look, I mean, is your wife crazy? Uh, we're all crazy. <laughs> I mean, everybody is crazy. Oh yes. yeah, everybody is crazy. Hundred percent. Like honestly, like, and I'm not saying this to be PC. Like when people are like, "Oh, all chicks are crazy," I'm like, "No, everyone is. Everybody's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yes, it a- just a- has their their slice of the clock. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah exactly. Wh- which one is it? Exactly. And it's like I'm only really like I don't get to see my male friends' uh, crazy sides too much. I've seen them. And I yeah. like Broken Lizard. I know all their crazy shit because I've you know lived with those guys for like 25 years. Sure. But like, you know, there's uh, unless until you uh, have sex with somebody, you're not going to like that's how you unlock the crazy. Like yeah. the, there's the a special crazy. It's a special level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we should start having sex is what you're saying. Uh, well, I mean, no, probably not. But why? I thought we all agreed last week that he, it was here's OK. The thing. So for... J- Jared's dating someone new. We're not, we can't see who it is on the show. Jared's dating someone new. She really wants him to fuck a dude. Like, and I think it's a, like a power move of like, hey, I own this over you now. Okay, like, hold on. That's crazy. And you, is she really, uh, is she? Will not wh- stop talking about it. Why at, does she want dinners? you to fuck a dude? I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but is it, it, so let me ask you, is it the comedy element or the danger element of like, I, I, I have something over you now? No, it's definitely the comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, there's I think no it's the other. There's I, only I one response. The there's, there's only one the, like I said, with when it, when it comes to me, like I'm Teflon because the audience is never gonna go. Oh, I never would I never would have thought that. We actually expect you to fuck a dude at some point in your life. <laughs> I'm expecting. Yeah, that. yeah. I'm like that's that. that's there going been, down. If I if I remember correctly, there have been two separate porn stars on this show that have both accused him of being gay. Yes, having only known him for an hour. Correct. So yeah, and they both said he will be gay at some but, point in his yeah, life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of like an Elton John sitch where Elton There's John was been, married to a I woman. I think and upwards then, around five female guests that have all accused me of being gay. Yes. Well, these are prof- professional sex workers. Yeah, who know that scene, and they. I know. like where you went with the professional. Same. Sex you didn't worker. say porn star. You I didn't like say that. sluts. You're very, very. I mean, you know, He's growing up. He's <laughs> becoming politically correct. No, 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 no. I don't slut shame because I fucking love sluts. Okay. <laughs> yes. You will never meet a guy who loves sluts more than Dan. That is no. true. That and is it true. doesn't matter if I'm fucking them or not. I just like that sluts exist. Yeah. yeah. You do, know what? Do what you want. It's fucking America. I have to admit, I have always uh, appreciated women who were uh, throwing it around the way that dudes get to throw yeah. it around. Sure. Well, because, you know, that's, I mean, You're the girl confident. I lost my virginity to, I was like, well, that girl likes to have sex. I've heard she's had sex with many people. Everyone. I'm going to. Uh, be one of those also people. Have. yeah yeah yeah. And, i would like to congratulations volunteer. on that i was 15 it's a fucking smart move that is a oh, super smart man. Got, because you know what i could name that girl right now in my school oh oh yeah still to this day oh yeah. no she was uh, she was the best thing that ever happened i never I, <laughs> I never i never got the chance she was too cool for me now so. when you say the best thing that ever happened to me and, you, and, and your wife hears this um my wife is not a jealous woman great oh, that's even better yeah how'd you guys meet uh, so when we made beer fest, we would get, uh, for a little while there, we would get paid to, by different colleges to go, uh, host beer fests. Oh, they definitely won't do that these days. By the way, yeah. biggest disappointment. Oh my God. Like biggest, we've been talking about uh, this because we're, we, we were going to go do a mentor day at a fraternity and now it's like seeing all of the fraternities are being deleted. And yeah, like, they don't, they don't and, right? anymore. Yeah. We got denied no. a few times just because of the name of the show. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, sure. It's like, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, we don't uh, want to promote drinking. So like when, you did, when you did, yeah, when you did beer guy. fest, you, yeah, so you met did, her at a college? Was she in college? She was uh, in grad school. Okay. And uh, at UF. And uh, we were, uh, me and Stolhansky 
we're, we're uh, doing this Florida run. Uh, and so, like, first they had us uh, judge, like, a Hawaiian Tropic bikini contest, and then they had us host the beer fest. And so all the Hawaiian Tropic girls uh, came, and she was friends with the Hawaiian Tropic girls. And I actually didn't meet her at the event. I met her at an after party. But, like, uh, I, I was walking to the after party, and I saw the lower half of a girl laying on her back on the street in high heels doing, uh, like, butt thrusts into sure. the air. And she was showing all the girls how to, you know, keep your butt tight. Yeah. And I just came around. And I realized what I, I came around. I was like, what kind of exercise is that? Not even a good line. And my wife is half Cuban. She got up on her knees and was ready to rip me a fucking asshole. But then she, I guess she recognized me because she like hesitated. And, and I just walked away, even though I thought she was the most beautiful one I'd ever seen in my life. I realized I'd done the technique known as rolling off. Oh, oh. you know, the well, roll off. Yeah. The old roll off. Yeah. yeah. When you're yeah. like, hey, how you doing? I don't give a fuck. And you keep walking away. That's <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized I had done that technique because she looked at me and then I just kept walking. And she was used to the dudes laying a line on and then coming in. Anyway, whatever. So we hooked up and uh, then we started dating long distance. And uh, it was, she was in grad school, she'd, so she would do like four weeks on and then have a week off. And so she'd come out to L.A. for a week, and we'd you know, have a fucking great time, and then she'd go back, and then I'd, I'd work, and then four weeks later, she'd come back, and we'd do it all over. We did that for two years, and that was actually the best relationship I've ever been in, because it was like, I'm getting all my work done, she's getting her studies done, right. then we get together for a week, and it's not like a month, fine. then you're like yearning for each other. Then you just come out and fucking blast each other as much as you possibly can and eat and drink and have crab have legs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you're talking about legs. You're talking to Seafood King over here. Yeah. 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 Some crab legs. We'll, we'll talk about the cod crisis seafood after the story. Seafood yeah. himself food poisoning There's a cod times. crisis? No, there's not. We'll get <laughs> into that after the story. Don't listen to don't this. Don't ask him this story. God fucking damn it. not a cod crisis. No, listen. I used to work at a seafood restaurant, so like I'm all interested in the fish. This was in a movie, right? What's up? I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt this story yet, but I don't either. It's over. No, that's, either, it's yeah. over. It's okay, over. Okay, it is. It is over. Uh, by the way, so uh, beer fest. If we can touch on that real quick, yeah. There wasn't many auditions out in my life that hey, I was. Wait, hold on. Let me plug my new television show, Tacoma FD, coming on March 28th on True TV. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and, go on. No, by the way, we'll go hardcore into Tacoma because we have a bunch of first responders who listen to this show. Okay, They're amped ton. about this show. Good. Yeah. Um, you, you guys should even, if you're on Facebook, join Drinking Bros First Responders. They would die. Oh okay. man, for you guys they, to they come lose in there, their minds. we'll give you access to go live whenever you want. Like, yes. hey, so actually on uh, on Friday night. This Friday uh, in Austin, Texas, we're doing with the Chive. We're doing a um, a free uh, stand up show. Kevin and I are doing a free stand up show in Austin, Texas. Great! That's the largest drinking bros chapter in the country. It four is. first yeah, responders, I think it's like what? Four thousand yes. people. Four thousand people. Yeah, for, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Four, yeah, four thousand people. Uh, tell everybody what, what time and, and where you, where you're at there. You know, I wish I uh, knew. And because um, this will air tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So they'll be able to go. It's yeah, we'll fr- put it out. It's yeah. Friday. So so during the day, there's a, uh, a, a meet and greet at the Chive office uh, in Austin. It's uh, I we'll think get the details. We're up, doing like a we'll happy get them hour. In Drinking Bros. Austin. We'll get it in Drinking Bros. First Responders. We'll get all. That. Yeah, we're doing yeah. a happy hour at the Chive. And then I think it's probably like around like 730 or eight or something like that. Uh, it's. A live show. I, I I'm gonna say the Paramount, but I don't know if it's at the Paramount Theater. But okay. Is it like, it's at a big theater. Okay. Um, and they just opened it up to the public. Um, so yeah, so you get your listeners in there. Uh, yeah, oh we will, oh, yeah, we will for yeah. sure. We'll go. But it's for first responders. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. So the meet and greet is all for is first responders in Texas. So beer fest. When, oh, yeah. I want to I want to go back to that. One of the only auditions that I was unbelievably sad that I did not. You get. auditioned for beer Correct. fest. Correct. Eric Olson got it. Eric Christian Olson yeah, so got you, it. For one of the German brothers. Really pissed off about that, yeah. Oh, shit. And you guys had... Uh, well, he talks about it every Will Forte. couple Forte. weeks. Will Forte. I mean, and then McGruber came out afterwards and yeah. all that shit. And I had, I had grown up on... One of my first movies we were talking about before going on air was The New Guy. So they kind of send you around to a couple premieres to go and do press leading up to that or whatever. So Super Troopers was the first one they sent me to. Okay. And... That was you auditioned for Super Troopers. I did not, oh, okay. uh, but Beer Fest was. Gotcha. But so, but I did the premiere at uh, at Super Troopers. Yeah. After that, when I saw what you guys did as a whole, I was like, "Holy fucking shit! I want to work with these guys." Yeah. And then whatever the next movie was, I was like, "I'm in." Next I'm one in. was Club Dread. Club Dread. Yeah. Didn't get that. 
and didn't get beer fest. Okay, okay. But beer fest was one of my all time be all faves. And then I ended up working with Joey Kern from uh, yeah uh, Super Troopers. I can't pull over. I yeah, can't pull over anymore. Awesome. When I saw that movie Super Troopers for the first time in a theater with a live audience, and yeah. it, it was at your premiere. Um, that was one of the funniest fucking movies I've ever seen. Thanks, man. Live. Because you, usually you, you don't see that something that sideways coming at you where you're right. just like, I don't know any of these people in the movie. Usually you go see something with like Jim Carrey or Will Ferrell. You kind of know what you're getting into. That year? Oh, yeah. This was well, the, the first was, time. I was the one that spread it around my squadron the year it came out. I saw it at Walmart. And it, it, the cover was what got me was all the fucking Mountie hat or the, the yeah, trooper hats. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, oh, bring it home. Like 30 minutes into it, call all the guys on my team that lived on the street. Come over. We rewinded it. Like, <laughs> and if you, and if you, could, if you could explain to the audience how that got made in the first place, because that's what I couldn't figure out at this premiere was how are all of these guys who aren't famous leads in their own movie? Yeah. That, that was the biggest shock to me where I was just like, all right, how did you do it? And I've, I've never met any of you to this day. Yeah. That's why we were super stoked to have you guys on the show. But I was like, how did you guys pull that off? I, it's still today a, a mystery to me. Well, so, you know, we made a movie called Puddle Cruiser back in like 96 or 97. And this is pre YouTube and all that shit. So yeah. Like, you know, we were performing live sketch comedy down in, in New York City in the village, and we would record short videos, but there was no place to show them to anybody except for live. Um, and so we wound up raising about, like, that was also when, like, Tarantino and Rodriguez and Linklater and Soderbergh and Spike Lee, all those guys were, and Kevin Smith were making indie films for, like, 10000 bucks or 100000 bucks. So we raised something like 150000 bucks and, uh, and shot that movie. And uh, we actually shot it at our at our college campus uh, over the summer. And um, one of the there was a girl that we were friends with from from Colgate and her dad retired from banking and wanted to get into independent film financing and said to her. Uh, Do you know anybody who does this for a living? I'd like to talk to them and, and pick their brains. So at, the, at, at that and she was like, yeah, I know these guys. And so. Uh, I'm telling the story out of order though. So like we had this, we had the super trooper script and uh, we were friends with a girl who worked for George Clooney and she wanted to become a producer. And so she talked to Clooney about it and he said, if you can find me a movie to make for 5 million or less, yeah, I'll do it under Maysville, which was his original production company. And she found super troopers and said, this is the one I want to do. And so with Clooney, we wound up uh, going to the presidents of every studio, every major studio. And they would say, okay, so... Um, Just based off the scripts, because they love the scripts. Based off of Clooney. Ah, there uh, it is. Because actually nobody liked the script. Nobody liked the script. <laughs> every, every president we met with um, said, so we have a problem with the script. There's, um, there's a scene in here where these people are meowing at each other over and over again. But that <laughs> makes one of the most iconic scenes <laughs> in yes. history now. Yes. Yeah, and we were like, we were, we knew it was fucking funny, yeah. and like yeah. we like, because we were high as shit when like. we wrote it, <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, this makes us laugh. Yeah. It's yes. got to be funny. Yeah. Yes. And so, but that was the one scene. Everybody was like, I just don't get it. You've, you're literally, it's it's two pages. The guys are saying meow over and over again, it's meow, 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 and they're like, we don't get it. Right. And we're like, we trust us. It's funny. And of course, why would they trust us? We're just like s s these schmucks. And so they would say, well, how much money do you want for to make the movie? And we're like, uh, $5 million budget. And they'd say, and who, uh, uh, who's acting in it? We're like, we're acting in it. And they'd say, and who's directing it? And Jay would say, I'm directing it. And they'd say, have you ever directed anything before? And he'd be like, a puddle cruiser. Which is like, okay, I have no idea what that is. And is George going to be acting in the movie? And we would say, no. And they'd be like, okay. Take it easy, guys, <laughs> and and send us out the door. We'll get back to you. And then they pass immediately. And and uh, we went around to every studio, every financier, everybody. Everybody said no. So meanwhile, we've got this guy who says, "Do you know uh, anybody who's making independent films?" I just I've never even read a script. And so he winds up meeting with our producer and reads uh, this. He takes a copy of Puddle Cruiser and reads the script for Super Troopers and. Every single person has passed in town. Every single, we're, we're exhausted. And he comes back a few days later and is like, who's making this script? And uh, our producer said, uh, you can be. And so he said, I'll, I'll give you guys uh, a million bucks to make this. Um, and so now, okay, so with Clooney now, 
we've got that million dollars. And then there's another guy, an investor who comes in and says, I'll, uh, I'll also kick in a million bucks and we can use that to get uh, a big actor to play the, the police chief. Brian uh, Cox. To, yeah, Brian so, Cox, so, so. Or, or to play, yeah, the, 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 the high patrol chief. So, um, we go for John Goodman. Ah. And, and Clooney's friends with them, and he says, the offer is a million dollars to play uh, Captain O'Hagan. And Goodman says, yes. And so it's like, fuck yeah. Okay, boom. We've got the million dollars from that guy. We're paying Goodman with it, and we've got the million dollars to shoot. We're making a movie. We're greenlit. We're psyched. We're in. It's happening. And you got John Goodman. And we got yeah. John Goodman. And the next day, I was, uh, I was at the Sky Bar with the girl who worked for Clooney. We were having celebratory drinks. And she looks over, and at the table is this guy who he's a New York investor who promised us a million dollars. He's sitting at a table, like partying with somebody. And she's like, that's, I'm not gonna say the guy's name. She's like, that's so-and-so. What the fuck is he doing out here? And she does a little recon. This girl's t- super connected. She does a little recon. And what we find out sitting there celebrating is that this guy is in, has flown out to LA and is shopping a John Goodman project and looking for a million bucks. So he actually didn't have the money. Oh, he was he a said middle he man. Did. Oh, he, did, he did the other thing. And so we find that it, it, literally it's, it's unfolding while we're sitting there at the Sky Bar and uh, everybody winds up pulling out. Goodman pulls out. Uh, Clooney gets pissed off and we think he pulls out. He actually didn't pull out, but we were like, fuck, total egg on our faces. So this other original investor with the $1 million said, I'll give you guys a million and a quarter. Let's just make this fucking thing. And so that's what we wound up doing. We shot it for a million and a quarter. We got Brian Cox, uh, who was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Iconic. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't see Goodman in that role now, honestly. No, it has to be him. Yeah, Brian, yeah, that's just, Brian that's, Cox nailed it. That's what happens. And then we, you know, we had uh, brought Puddle Cruiser to um, Sundance, and it didn't sell there. Mm. Uh, so we went with Super Troopers, and we were terrified. We were like, you know... These movies are four or five years apart. This is basically our last bite at the apple. If we make a second film with investors' money and we don't sell it, we're never going to make another fucking movie again. Right. And, and, and uh, Fox Searchlight stepped up and we were the first film to sell at that festival. So, Man. Yeah, because I, I remember sitting at the L.A. premiere and just dying, just dying laughing my ass off. And it was small. It was really small. It wasn't like the, hey, we're going to yeah. shut down Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, no, nah, uh, no. Nah. It was at a tiny theater, and I was just like, all right, cool. Laugh my ass off. And I was like, man, it seems possible. Like, yeah. it, it seems like this would be possible. It comes out, and, and if memory serves me correctly, it does pretty decent in the box office. Yeah. But then DVD, you guys explode. explode. Oh, yeah. Once yeah. it went you, to Walmart, that is where the explosion went, and it, it went subculture. But I heard a yeah. crazy number of like $20 million on DVD or something like that. No, it was forty. It was sixty. It was it was, it was, it was wow, no way. There. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like. Uh, and do you guys all have points on this on the back end or all that stuff? We, you know, um, y- yes and no. I mean, like uh, the I, like I'm not going to say anything bad about Fox Searchlight. They actually are great. So like, but whatever I say will sound negative. They they bought it and they uh, they put it on. I think it was like 1,200 screens or something like that. Something phenomenal. You know, our dream was to have a movie in one theater. Again, at that time, there's no YouTube or anything. Yeah, it's right. like just oh, one theater. One. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. one theater. That's yeah. that, that's the dream. And and they you know they made the offer and they were like, yeah, we'll go. Uh, we're gonna put it in like uh, like minimum like 1,100 markets or something like that. We're like, are you f- like that day? What? I'm sorry. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that, that kind of thing. Like holy fucking shit, your dreams are changing. You know. Yeah. Uh, and um, and they did a great job marketing it. Everything was phenomenal. The deal itself was was basically the what your first deal is. It's like, and we're not thinking anything like they're like, when the movie makes you know, eighty million dollars, you'll make this much money. You'll get this bonus, or like you or you won't get paid. We were looking at it. We were like, this is the uh, first break even. They're saying and after marketing and all that. We weren't thinking about. We didn't understand the way the theater works, or the theater takes all that money yeah. too. They're like, yeah. it's this, crazy, isn't it? It has to make this much for us to really be in profit mode. We didn't yeah. understand any of that shit, so we saw that number. We're like, oh well, fuck it. Who cares? Like, we just want the movie. We're not going to make there. money, but we got this movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then it happened. Like, we got to that point. Where we're like, and we were hearing from everybody. We knew the DVD was taking off, and it, like, uh, we've heard crazy numbers. We'll never know the exact number, but uh, we do know minimum, and we've heard sort of the high end of things. And uh, which is the dream, by the way, Th- that is your move to Hollywood, you know, sell a script with your best friends. Well, the, so th- that was like it was the opposite because I'm from New York City. I was like, now I don't have to move to Hollywood. 
I'm going to stay here. And oh, <laughs> yes, I do. Me and, the, me and my wife, that's... We love New York more than life itself. Not big fans of Hollywood. Yeah. And you think, yeah, yeah. You're you like, I got it made. I can stay. I'm good. But you, then you Club can't. Dread opened against the Passion of the Christ, and we got fucking killed. And then it was like, all right, now we're moving to Hollywood. Yeah. Sure. So I, 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 I want to bring that up because that was your that was your second film afterwards. Um, was it race because of the success of Super Troopers, or did you feel like you had adequate time? Because usually with a musician or you know any writer or director, whatever, if they have a huge success, they want something jammed out immediately. Yeah, there's a saying, you have your whole life to write your first album, but 18 months to write your second album, something like that. Correct. Yeah. Musicians. Was that how you guys felt with, with Club Dread? Well, we got a first look deal with Searchlight, mm -hmm. and uh, they were like, yeah, give us the idea, you know, come on in. Uh, we're ready to hear it. And so we're like, oh, fuck, we have to come up with an idea. No, no. no <laughs> you hear that? They did well with the movie. And then someone called them up and was like, hey, you guys should make another one. Yeah. yeah. We've never had that. No, That's so this, weird. This is before the movie even comes out. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, OK, first look. And they had a, a certain window to to pull the trigger on it, we, which actually benefited us because the movie was coming out when the window was closing. So they had to green light this movie before the movie even came out. And uh, we were like, you know, we had guys chugging maple syrup, like three bottles each and, and, you know, sugar coma and vomiting. We had full frontal male nudity, you know, like which I love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diehard fan of, of that. I, I've put five, six dicks in movies. So yeah, like, you got to love it. Yeah. I There's actually it. a good story about you and a couple of one of our buddies and some a third party. And you're the buddy of ours is super uncomfortable with male nudity. Yeah. So if anybody's <laughs> ever uncomfortable with male nudity, I like to just ramp it up, obviously. 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 Yeah. But Club Dread comes out. Uh, well, so so the idea was like, okay, when you write something, you have to shoot it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, why don't we just like, what if we, we're joking around. We're like, what if we pitch an idea where we're on like a, a tropical island with like a hundred chicks in bikinis? Like, that'd be pretty sweet. And then we're like... <laughs> Looking yeah, at each other let's like, write a movie Sandler. that we're all going to really enjoy <laughs> yeah, shooting. That's what Sandler does. Let's shoot everything in Hawaii. And Dude, say, he got a five-picture, $100 million deal with Netflix just yeah. to make yeah. garbage. Gar garbage. <laughs> it's nonsense. <laughs> garbage. So when you pitch it and they say yes, there's got to be a level of shock. And then, all right, great. We've got to go and execute. We were shocked. I mean, we script. pitched a horror comedy. I, I think the mistake was that we should have just come out with another like straight up comedy instead of immediately shifting the tone to like a horror type thing. Sure. Because that's something that, and we opened against the passion of the Christ. Yeah. And those two things uh, combined to, to kill us at the box office. Um, well, you know, the Christ got killed as well. So I, I yeah, 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 right. yeah. In the movie. <laughs> yeah. In the movie. Yeah, yeah. That was your cross to bear that weekend. <laughs> yes, not not yes. his. You're right. You're Obviously. Right. Yeah. You got any more? Uh, no, no. I, He's I, come on, there's I, a CrossFit joke I, in there yeah, somewhere. He's good. He's good. He was the original CrossFitter, obviously. <laughs> yeah. no, I, and, and I get it. Yeah. Um, uh, he probably built the set, too, because he was a carpenter. Um, no. you, you, but, never, on, you, never, you never hear about Jesus' carpentry skills. Though. You really don't. You always hear about Harrison Ford's, but never Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we, when you come <laughs> so out against bigger. Passion of the Christ, nobody was expecting that to be a, a gigantic No, they literally said it. was all in Aramaic, and they... That's what they I mean, said. Because that, that, yeah. that was in India as well, which he, what, Mel financed it himself. Yeah. Yeah. And did okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They made like what? 600 million. Yeah. 600. So did his ex-wife. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, apparently when you go full ham on somebody and they record it, you can just take their money. Yeah. yeah you can. You can. Yeah. So what's, what's the feeling like you see? Cause you know, on a Friday, right? You see, you start to see these opening weekend numbers trickle in on deadline for club dread. Yes. So it's another, it's a, it's a nice story. So, uh, a couple weeks so probably like after Super Troopers came out, Adam Sandler called us up and was like, uh, I just want to meet you guys. And uh, so we took a, a general meeting with Adam Sandler. He said, you know what? I, I went, I, I lowered my baseball hat. I saw Super Troopers in the movie theater. I got to tell you, I think you guys are the real deal. R-rated comedy. What a fucking great thing. If you ever need my help, just uh, just awesome. let me know. That is awesome. Because it's, well, it's awesome, but everybody in Hollywood says that. Back then, he was still yeah. putting out good shit. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. but also everybody says that. So That's did he actually yeah. come yeah. through with so, anything? Uh, Club Dread comes out. He actually, like a couple weeks before it came out, he was like, they called up uh, his company, Jack Jarpito. Happy the, Madison. The president Madison. of his company. Yeah. And, was, and was like, uh, yeah, you're not, you're not tracking very well. Your numbers aren't tracking very well. So uh, you might need our help just putting it out there. We're like, okay, okay. And then we understood what that really mm -hmm. meant when, when we bombed at the box office. And that Monday, the Monday after it opened, uh, 
they called up again. They were like, okay, now you need our help. Come on in. And so we sat down with Sandler and Jack Jaraputo and a guy named Tom McNulty. And uh, they said, just pitch us an idea. Let's, mm-hmm. uh, let's, let's get you guys making another movie. And so we pitched him Beer Fest. And so we went and, and, uh, and sold it to Sony. And uh, they were going to produce it for us. And what happened is, ultimately, uh, we wrote the script that, that we shot. And we went in for, like, the, the Happy Madison people were like, we're going to say something we've never said to anybody before. We've got no notes for you guys. This script is perfect. We're ready to go. We were like, yeah. And they're like, really? <laughs> and they were like, let's oh, wow. go get our green light. And we went to the meeting to get our green light. And uh, the executive was like, I think you, I think you missed the boat on this. And uh, gave us a few reasons why uh, we missed the boat. Now, in this executive's uh, defense, he actually did ultimately apologize to us and say, you know what, I, I, I got it wrong. But he was like, you know, you, you, you've made this a sports movie. And this isn't a sports movie. And we're like, it is a sports movie. That's yeah. the whole point. It's like, it's definitely guys a training movie. Yes. Yeah. by getting out of shape to yeah. exact their revenge. Your hair, by the way, in that movie was just amazing. And real. Yeah. We, we shaved three inches of male pattern baldness into my head and I permed Stop. the rest. Wow. And I lived like that for like six months. That's Dedication. <laughs> Meryl Streep, I'm going to look into the camera for the video, folks. Meryl Streep can go fuck herself. Yeah. That was dedication. Are you signing on to that comment? I'm, no, I'm not endorsing that. I don't endorse that. I don't endorse that. But listen, no, I thought it like De Niro won an Oscar for changing his appearance for Raging Bull. Charlize yeah. Theron won one for changing her appearance in Raging Bull. I yep. changed my appearance for, uh, for Beer Fest. Monster. Yeah, yeah. For Monster. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You gain some weight and go bald as a dude. You're supposed to win an Oscar. 100%. Yeah. That's like, the uh, rules. Christian Bale playing Dick Cheney. Have you seen that movie yet? Yeah, but Vice. he didn't win. No, he didn't win. Yeah, um, it was somebody else. So, somebody else, what are you gonna do? It was Mr. Robot. Get balder yeah, and fatter, which was I fucking think, yeah. terrible, by the way. Well, you didn't like it. I'm the one person who was like, I wanted to see the Sasha Baron Cohen version of that movie. Yeah, because you know he worked for seven years on that script, and then they told him to go fuck himself at Is the that end. Right? Yeah, uh, he had a hard R version where Freddie was, you know, AIDS fucking dudes mm-hmm. doing every drug there was. Well, you've and seen then, Milk, right? Like yes. with Sean Penn? Correct. Great fucking movie. Yes. By the way. And it, they played it hardcore as fuck that whole time. So that's what Sasha Baron Cohen wanted to do yeah. with Bohemian Rhapsody. And Queen came in and said, no, this movie's not about Freddie. It's about the band. And and Sasha Baron Cohen was like, look, Freddie was the band. Well, I, I Freddie was the band. I don't want to. I challenge. I I'm sorry. What's this. the guitar player's name in exactly. Queen? Yeah. Name yeah. one <laughs> other person I'm from sorry. Queen. What's the drummer's name in Queen? Exactly. <laughs> So at the, at the last here. second, they scrapped it, um, but they still had that. You, you, and you know the drill. They still had the financing there. Yeah. If you can bring in somebody, it would be great and bring it under this budget. Brian Singer came on, um, who was never touched boys or even Jared. Yeah. Um, hey, he didn't touch me. He's you super spent, polite. You were over at his house watching a movie with 18 other game. Cuban boys. I don't I don't want to get into <laughs> to your journey in that's life, personal. and that's fine. That's personal. Yeah, we had a good time. We, watched, we watched Rick and Morty, actually. They said, look, you know, uh, yeah. studio <laughs> said, look, bring it in under 30 or whatever it is, and then you can make this movie, and Mr. Robot can be the guy. He didn't even have time to grow the mustache, so it was just like. That's a fake mustache? Fake stash. You never go fake stash. I don't respect that. Ah! Ah, there it yeah. is. Yeah, there but you know what is. I do respect is now, ever since seeing that movie, when he's telling this story about the executive, like, oh, you know, I don't know about this script. I'm just picturing him going, you're going to be the motherfucker that lost Queen. And walking out, it's like, you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because with beer They fest, pretend I- they know what the fucking regular American people love and know, and they don't. They don't have a fucking clue. It's, you know, Hollywood, the, the guy is actually a nice guy and a smart guy. It's just, you know, you read these scripts. It's like the, the, the meow scene, you know, like, it's a really hard thing. Especially to judge comedy. And I mean, you guys, you know, like it's just you're not in the room when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we went to the MPAA with Range 15, they told us we had to hard cut four scenes. Yeah. They said even to get an NC-17. Right. (laughs) There was a a penis that was too erect. Um, (laughs) Sure. Dead serious. And they were like, hey, it's got to be. And this was a whole debate. It's got to be below a certain angle, and I think it was like and and two sixteen too degrees much, or something. Too it was yeah. too much time on the erect penis, and okay. then the murder of two toddlers. That was a uh, okay. They yeah, should, yeah. And, they, and then they a zombie got raped. There, yeah. Well, and the, they were no, not that was fine good, with that. That was consensual, wasn't it? The zombie? No, because she was a zombie. Like she was dead. How do you know? So, you're not a zombie. But the toddlers, they were our kids. Exactly. I'm not okay. an expert okay. in either so, of they. So. Yeah. yeah, it was it was my daughter. I don't want to hear son. those notes. Yeah, but when Beer Fest came out, 
what was the reaction in, as far as what it did box office wise and then career wise after that? Well, what happened is that um, it tested the highest we had uh, had a movie test. I think Warner Brothers actually was planning on sending it straight to video. When, the, like, well, when you say that, you mean like focus groups? What do you mean? Yeah, yes. focus groups. Yeah, yeah. So they sent it you know, to Arizona. Yeah. Uh, and for, for our audience, like, what is that? You get back ratings or? Yeah, so what, what happens is, like? uh, is you do a test screening. The studio will have a test screening of a rough cut of the movie. Uh, so the music isn't done, the color's not corrected and everything, but they just want to get an idea of like how the movie paces and where, what the funny parts are. And we like that too. Because it's like, okay, you take a scene, you're like, they laugh there, they laugh there, they laugh there. So we're going to cut out the dead spot, the dead spot, and the dead spot yeah, and right. put three laughs together and now we look like geniuses. You yeah, know? you have a better movie. Yeah, and so, um, so I know Warner Brothers was like already kind of like, yeah, maybe straight to video. They, they weren't, the president wasn't sure he liked the movie, and so we tested it. And then what? Then the focus group fills out cards, and they have to rate it excellent, very good, good, uh, fair, or poor. And the the system is your rating is the excellent and very good. So the percentage of people that rate it excellent or very good that's your number. Yeah, yeah. And so in the in, with Beer Fest, it was something like an eighty-seven or something like that. Eighty-seven percent. That's a great number. Said excellent or very good. Yeah, because then that translates into definitely recommend, which is the ne- other That's thing that they look at. Eighty-seven out of hundred. Eighty-seven out of hundred. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, it says definitely recommend, which is the word of mouth thing, and they they want that too. So uh, then they said, okay, this was in like July. They said, oh fuck, this is a good movie. Back to school, and so they uh, decided to put it out in August. Which was the mistake because you need like three to six months to properly market a film. Yeah, do junkets and all that. Yeah, stuff. all that yeah. shit. And yeah. just get awareness out there. Because yeah. you really, to get people to see a movie, you have to hammer it into their head. It yeah. just has to be something that they're they have talking to know about. when that thing is coming out. Exactly. Yeah. And well, so, I mean, that's why you see teaser trailers. Like, it started with trailers. There was teaser trailers like six to eight months out from the goddamn movie or a year yeah. with, oh, yeah. with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's like a year, year and a half out. Oh, yeah. Teaser. It's crazy. Ooh. Even even yeah. Tarantino's new movie, they you know they dropped a, a couple posters the last two days of DiCaprio and Brad Pitt on a poster separately. Posters look like shitty. They're obviously not from Tarantino. They're from some marketing department. Yeah. But they're, it's just a, just a subtle reminder. Hey, man. Yeah. July, this movie's coming out, you yeah. know, and it's like, you could have just combined them for the full thing. Let's see the full poster. And they don't, yeah. they don't have that or a trailer yet, but they're just reminding the audience. That's it. Yeah. That's the long lead stuff. And so in, this, in the case of Beer Fest, because it tested high, they uh, changed the, ex- the projections. Because I think the projections originally were more in, in line with like Super Troopers, and then they changed the projections to be like $50 million dollars. I think like opening weekend or something like that, uh, which it didn't do. I mean, there wasn't enough long lead time and it's a great movie. There's a lot of funny shit. I also think that they marketed it just with like the burps, like uh, li- really the trailer was just dudes going like, ah, burp, ah, burp. And like, you know, it, yeah, but there were a lot of good jokes in it that they should have. Oh like, yeah. Right. Yeah. The guys is the, the mom alone. The grandma, like, the yeah. grandma. But when, exactly. but when you do a studio film, yeah. you don't have control over the trailer. They do. Cause we, we brought up, our objections about it um and yeah they didn't you know pay attention too much um to that and it's fine i'm not bitter about it. the movie actually it did fine but because it uh, was projected because the projections were readjusted it didn't hit the projections and so we were done at warner brothers uh we had a, we had an overall deal with them and i think that kind of ultimately led to us not making another movie with them Gotcha. And, yeah. and is that what happened with Super Troopers 2? Because we were shocked. We were, you know, before we came on air talking to you about Range 15 and how we had crowdfunded that. It actually happened to be at the exact same time. I believe it was maybe three or four weeks apart. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's how I met these guys. We ended up raising you know, money for this movie. Um, and I was really, really shocked that you guys had to go to crowdfunding for Super Troopers 2, knowing how well it did. Yeah. For many, many years. I mean, because that, look, that was one of those movies everybody just kept watching over and over it's again. It's one of those things everybody brought up every year. Yeah. When so are they doing another What one? led yeah. to that for you guys? Uh, well, it's funny you say it too, by the way, because Netflix, like, we actually had a meeting with Netflix and, and they were like, your movie is the one that kind of breaks the, the, the pattern. Like, most movies come out, they, they, you know, even on DVD too, we knew this. Like, you do well at the beginning and then it just plummets and they're like, your thing just DVD keeps. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and When's so, the last time you saw Super Troopers? Man, uh, I watched it three months ago. Yeah, a yeah, couple months I, ago. 
Probably a year ago. Yeah. I mean, I mean awesome. that recent. And, and again, it was just. Actually, it's the only movie I've gone to see in a theater. Whenever it's on. Like, it's it's one of those. Last, like four yeah. or five years. But, but whenever it's on, there's a handful of comedies for me. Whenever it's on, I'm going to watch it no matter what time of day it yeah. is. No matter what time. MacGruber's like that for me. Super Troopers. There's a handful of movies that I'm yeah. like. It's also a badge, too. Like, it's a if, if, I, if I make some kind of inside joke about Super Troopers and you don't get it, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It's man. funny because I've also heard that with, like, uh, people dating. You yeah, know, like yeah. guys and girls are like. Well, when you when you said when you knew what Squidbillies was, yeah, yeah. it's like, like ding, I fell, ding, in, ding, 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 ding. I fell, yeah. I, I fell in love with you right there, <laughs> oh. that very <laughs> moment. So, and by it wasn't way, so, just the mustache; it was yeah, also. But the, and and you know what? And then I was embarrassed because I. It's been such a long time since I saw the Patrick Swayze episode of Squidbilly uh, yeah. that I was like, fuck, my quotes are so vague. I wish I... Because I used to be able to quote that much. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> He's like... Uh, he tells that story about... My him. way over the highway. That way. was me. <laughs> yeah, see, great. now I don't even fucking remember these lines and it's pissing me off. Yeah, well, go back and watch it. Yeah, well, we've exactly. Been, we've been trying to hunt down unknown Henson for a long time. Yeah. Because we're like, what's this guy? Him and Dana Snyder. Like, we no want, shit. We want to fucking hang out with when those When my two. new soldier showed up to the 82nd Airport, I made him watch watch all of Squidbillies uh-huh. and all of Trailer Park Boys. And Aqua okay. Teen Hunger Force. And Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And oh. we watch all that stuff. Aqua classics. All of those are classics. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's the adult swim so It's a badge, right? Like, if people don't understand, if they don't get that stuff, I know they're just not going to be able to jive with me. It sure. is. And, and when I, so I did, a, I ended up doing a movie with Joey Kern years later, right? Yeah. Uh, who played the, you can't pull over anymore. We're in Simi Valley shooting this movie and there was a fair going on. I, he get, he got stopped every two minutes and it was some kid screaming i can't pull over anyone i can't pull Christ. over and i was like man is it like this all the time because that movie at that point it had come out almost 10 years earlier yeah no one goes, will ever forget that scene yes oh, yeah. and he goes to this day like dude i cannot go anywhere without somebody screaming i can't pull over anymore and i was yeah. like how do you feel about that and he goes well it's one of the greatest movies of all time so i feel pretty good and i'm like <laughs> it is it is listen there's uh in in the movie we're at a little league baseball game and there's uh, a, uh, the cot- this gigantic cotton candy scene. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's a guy. Move your fucking candy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> that Move shit. that gigantic cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> so that guy, I can't remember. He, I think he lived in Connecticut with his wife. There was uh, the neighborhood kids would play mailbox baseball all the time and just destroy everybody's mailbox with their baseball bat. And his mailbox was spared. And he ultimately found out, like, he somehow met with one of the kids or something like that. But, like, they were like, oh, yeah, it's because you're in Super Troopers. We didn't do your your mailbox out of respect. Wow. Ah. <laughs> there yeah. it is. Yeah. It's almost, that's so almost like, like being, so you know, good. mob boss yeah, in New York. That's great. Uh, yeah. That's great. So why? why I just can't wrap my mind around this. Why did you have to go crowdfunding? Why didn't a studio just come in and back up the truck and say, hey, make this fucking sequel? Or did you want to just stay to yourself? Yeah, for Super Troopers too. No, no. We wanted, well, well, Fox Searchlight owns the movie. Right. So and, and the characters. So they were the only ones who could do it. Um, and I think they're feeling, you know, we pitched the movie to them back in like 2008 and they liked it. But also, um, we were auditing them uh, because of, you know, we felt that we weren't getting what we were uh, right. rightfully. By the way, to everybody doing. at home, every studio steals. So all of these audits usually turn out exactly like you Oh, yeah, but, but everybody audits the studios. Yes. Like there's, and part of the, uh, the delay was that there's a long line of people and there's only one lawyer yep. that handles this and so on purpose on purpose yeah and so i think we waited something like five or six years for our turn Oof. in the audit process and so while that was happening we were actually negotiating in good faith with the studio like we were pitching them while we were auditing them it's just the way the business is done and so there were n- no hard feelings about it but they were like you know that we can't green light anything nothing can happen until the audit is settled and it's of course it remains part of the negotiation you know, whether that's right or not, but like it is. And so by the time that was all settled, then it was like, now you're into like 2014. And I think the studio's feeling was that the fans weren't out there anymore. And so did they ask, did they, did they <laughs> yeah, ask, they never, they've never looked at a shred of data in this yeah. community. Did then. they ask Netflix about that? Cause <laughs> well, that's, you know, but that's what, that's what you're saying as a filmmaker. You're like, look, we do live touring across the country and we actually meet the fans. Yeah. And fill these all theaters. the time. All the time. Yeah. They are out there still. And, but they, you know, you can't say that to an executive. They're not going to see it that way. And so, uh, ultimately really it's the opposite because looking at this from a marketing perspective, you captured a, a 16 to like 24 audience with Super Troopers 1. Now all those people are in their mid-30s. Yeah. 
and they all are still massive fans, and they all have better working credit cards now. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Disposable income. And they're income. all yeah. senior yeah. in their fields. You have senior police officers that are going to push this down yeah. all the way. So it's like from that perspective exactly. of just yeah. auditing the country, it's like, no, no. This is way better now because <laughs> well, just doing marketing and, and media and CPG like we do. Uh, I, I got to tell you, there's a lot of old school marketing people, especially media, that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right? They really and don't. They never have. Like if you watch the trailers that come out for movies, and I've seen trailers, I'm like, man, this is bullshit. And mm-hmm. I go watch the movie. I'm like, this is a really good movie. What the fuck were they doing with this trailer? Yeah. I guarantee it came from some production house or marketing agency that just like, oh, let's do this. This will be cool. No. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, you know, I mean, Hollywood is a very fear-based uh, Oh, man. Industry. Everything is Especially now, I was going to ask you, is it, does anybody have the balls to make a real comedy right now? Like, that, that, that just goes after people because it's funny, man. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, honestly, I think the best comedies that have been made over the last few years are Marvel Comics. You know, like, well, I, you know, like Deadpool to Deadpool, me yeah. is fucking Deadpool's sick. Deadpool's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like that love Dude, it's montage. It's the only one that's getting made. I was thinking about this this morning. Like just movies in general. Like we even stopped making like just general action movies. I mean, shit. Think of like late nineties, early two thousands. Every year you had a Van Dam. You had a you, yeah. you, sure you, you, you a had, Seagal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had executive. Yeah. You had executive decision. I, I would had, say the Rock the, is like, filled in for not that. Really? Now, like but. now, now the Rock is like. The Rock is repeating these weird, like big, massive. Sure, like when you, when you had when you had uh, like, like Rampage, Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger, yeah. you were guaranteed to see some titties in a Schwarzenegger. Exactly, yeah. a hard R. Yeah, you know, like, the Rock is doing PG thirteen for, for. And I yeah. love the Rock. I mean, no disrespect to. Not the at all. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's yeah. awesome. He's, but he's, he's also doing these. The movies is like like the most recent ones is Skyscraper, Rampage. Like it's a very. Weird, like world destruction every time. It's like okay, it's a no, for, that's it's not a formula. What, it's a yeah. formula. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's but what happens also is that it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, the ripple effect doesn't go the way you, as a filmmaker, think it should go. Yeah, yeah. No. You know, like when we were at Warner Brothers, I think Batman Begins came out and made like two hundred million dollars opening weekend. It was like fuck yeah, Warner Brothers is rocking it, and we were like, you know, all times to perform, and that's like every city we fly in. The hotel's across the street from yeah. the club. You sleep in, you do your thing, you go do the show. You, you know, breeze you, back out, you have a nice dinner, they take you to the nicest whatever um, place yeah. it is. Yeah. And then you're like, man, that was an awesome city. No, yeah. it wasn't. Um, where do you guys shoot this? Here yeah. in LA? In LA, yeah. In, in LA. In have you had any... Uh, I, we haven't seen the show. It premieres the 28th of March, right? Correct. Yeah. On, on True on TV. TV. And look, anybody who's out there who's watching March Madness, you're about to see 50 million trailers jammed into your face at the start of tonight's game. Yeah, tonight and tomorrow Which I night, believe basically. is yeah. fairly dickus in it. Oh, my. Uh, I got no one but honestly, uh, for you guys to go this route, it's perfect. That's perfect. where everybody wants to yes. see you guys. Wait, now you guys are in a fire department? Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the original tagline was same mustache as different outfit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, because I like we're that, this yeah. summer, we're starting to film a thing we're calling Ambulanced, and it's just the four of us as an ambulance crew. That's, that's yeah. super fucked up. Yeah. We're buying an ambulance in San Antonio. And we're just, all degenerates. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're super dark fucking weirdos. Listen, yeah. so that's what it is. It's like you, you know, Kevin and I were working it backwards, you know, and, and we were like, all right, we want to get on TV. We want, we want to do a TV show. What does the people really like about us? It's uh, it's Super Troopers. So how do we do that? What's the fire department? Fire, fire department. department. Let's just be lazy. <laughs> well, but then, but then the thing. So we were like, well, okay, and, and Super Troopers. How do? We, what is it about Super Troopers? It's unique. Okay, they're on the most deserted stretch of highway. Yeah. In Vermont, well, fire so departments got, are uniquely situated for that because you go, you do twenty four hour. People don't know this about fire unless you work in, as a first responder. But you like you do two twenty four hour shifts a week, usually forty eight yeah. hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you don't do you have, shit. Not you team dinners. Yeah. yeah like, you don't like, do shit I mean. for ninety percent of the time. I can definitely time. get you guys into the Lakewood Fire Department because uh, oh, yeah. a bunch of my guys all, yeah, yeah, all yeah. firefighters there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah but, for sure. But that's it. So we're like, well, firefighters with some downtime. What if it's the rainiest city in the country? So there's no fires. <laughs> so that seems like a pretty good idea. Uh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> so, and so it's genius. I don't want. I don't want any spoilers. But are you guys trolling? Your, no. your victims? Like no, you no, no. W- so, like, you know, one thing we've always, uh, like, our philosophy has always been uh, is we don't pick on people uh, aggressively. If somebody fucks with us, then we'll fuck with, then we'll bring the heat. Right. But otherwise, like, we're just fucking with each other. We're friends and we're not dicks. Uh, 
And also, you know, like we tried to do this with Super Troopers, but we kept getting reviewed as like bumbling uh, highway patrolmen. And that was something we really didn't want with the firefighters because we don't believe these people should be fucked with in any way. Like they're doing something yeah, yeah. fucking yeah, great. Absolutely. And so we really wanted to stress with this show that it was like these guys are great at their jobs as all first responders are. Right. They're prepared like all firefighters are. Their station's yeah. clean. Their shit's triple checked. It's ready to go. But like all firefighters, every single firefighter, yeah, it's a 24-hour shift. There is some downtime. And in those moments, every firefighter will tell you the crazy shit happens. These are adrenaline junkies <laughs> who are fucking living yeah, with They have dudes. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they fuck with each other. And all they the go time. crazy with yeah. each other. That's, and then half the time, three quarters of the time, 90% of the time, the calls they go on are not fires anyway, even in like high fire areas. No, it's like no, minor it's old traffic folks accidents homes. and old folks' yeah. homes and, and people bullshit, getting shit yeah. stuck in things yeah. and like. Um, but the Tacoma, uh, we got contacted by a Tacoma firefighter who was like, you motherfuckers, we're one of the busiest stations in the country. We fight plenty of fires. They probably, <laughs> oh, don't buy into that yet. Well, but then he's, I'll, I'll call, I'll call the guys that are higher up and ask if that's I true. I doubt they're fighting. They're probably showing up to a lot of car accidents here. Yeah. I doubt yeah. they're fighting a lot of fires. Come on. Yeah, well, Tacoma, there's no way. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But he, you no, know, I'll he, find out. I'll find out the real. He did come to, uh, we did a show in, in Seattle and he showed up. And was really? Like, uh, yeah, and he's like, I'm that guy that contacted you guys That's on, on Twitter. And he's like, uh, I was just, I was just pulling your leg. By the way, I am also a technical consultant. For, uh, <laughs> oh, of course, you're sliding down. You're like, hey man, we're shooting, we're shooting in LA. Yeah, <laughs> nowhere near where you're at. <laughs> yeah, where yeah, you're at. Exactly. Uh, well, look, uh, where can everybody find the show and uh, and find you and on find social you. media? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. The show is uh, March 20th on True TV. Uh, which nobody knows where the fuck that is. And uh, what do they you have do, streaming services as well? True TV. I, they've made a deal with Netflix. Okay, so cool. they're going to go on Netflix. But so uh, if you go to the, uh, your TV guide, just keep like going until you get to like the two hundreds or the three hundreds, and at some point you'll see Impractical Jokers. Yeah, appear like across the whole nine hundred episodes. That's and True then, TV. Yeah, and exactly. that's where we're going to be on March twenty eighth. Uh, it's 10 episodes. Uh, I can't wait. And it's, uh, the show's great. The show's same, great. Same. And, and again, if you're out there watching March Madness, uh, you will you will not be able to find the game you're looking for. And you'll be like, where the fuck is this game? It's on True TV. On True TV. Yes. And then you'll see a ton of promos for this man's show. Now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who inspired you or helped you in your career. Okay. Can I piss? No, you can't. You've got to say who this is. You can piss right afterwards. Okay, okay. Who is uh, the one person that's helped you? Is out it the that most? woman you banged when you were fifteen that was the best? Or? She oh. helped me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wait, helped me in my life or in my career? Uh, whoever you either, way. either one. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever, yeah. You get to shout out anyone. It's, it's the very end of the show. It's just to say thank you for for all that you've done. Could be anything. Could be sexual. Could be educational. Oh Jesus. Could be career wise. Oh Jesus. Well, I mean, fuck, listen, you know, my parents helped me out quite a bit just in terms of like the attitude to go after your dreams, you know, they were and like, making you exist. Yeah. yeah, yeah they, they fucked they, each other. Yes. Yeah. Your so dad thanks. didn't pull out. Thanks. No, he didn't. He yeah. Didn't. He kept it in the whole way. He kept it in with my sister who's older. And that's why my parents got married in the first place. That's a there shotgun. It is. There it is. There right it off is. the bat. Yeah. <laughs> He's South American, you know. Thanks, Dad. Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Muchas gracias. <laughs> uh, is your middle name Carlos? Is that it real? Is. It is. It is. I heard a rumor about that. Yeah, I was like, there's no. His name is Carlos, my dad. Was it really? You yeah. don't look like a Carlos. Yeah. Well, Two whites no, to be a little Carlos. Bit. Yeah, well, a little bit. No, well, he's Italian, and uh, a lot of, or, well, their family's Italian. Leme is an Italian last name. Mm. A lot of Italians moved to Argentina, so I think he's like. Were they escaping fascism? It could be. Yeah. Why yeah. are you pointing to me? I was pointing that way. Just yeah, like, yeah but the finger did, the finger did he curl was, he around. Was pointing <laughs> to, I thought you were uh, wrapping this around with a gay yeah. joke. AOC. He was pointing to AOC yeah. somewhere. Like, yo, oh, she's around that. No, I'm kidding. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So your parents. That's great. Yeah, so they fucked. Uh, and um, then there was like a, there, a, a headmaster of, of the school I went to in New York City. I got kicked out. And uh, he said I could come back if I applied myself at my new school. And like, and then he reiterated the deal with me. He was like, you're getting Fs at this school. If you want to come back to the, your school in New York City, you have to get uh, a B-plus average. I know it sounds fucking petty, but I wound up applying, to myse applying myself, and I wound up getting an A-minus average. 
And it really at like age 16, I was like, holy fucking shit. I can, if I put my mind to things, I can do it. And that actually is the lesson that has stuck with me throughout the rest of my that's life. Amazing. And that's, that's, awesome. the re- that's the reason you dropped out of college, right? So I dropped out of college. Yeah. I did five years of high school and three and like point two years of college. Hey, that's eight years total. So yeah, I mean, correct. So I, I did my time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Masters. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, we can buy it now, can't we? Well, <laughs> well, but then, then at Colgate, they showed up to a, a live show uh, in Syracuse that Kevin and I did. And the whole administration showed up with my honorary degree. Ah! Wow! That's Look at that. Fucking that's Super dude. cool. It's, Dreams do come true, kids. Yeah. <laughs> but then I looked at the signature. I was like, that doesn't look like the Dean's signature on that degree. Was it Kevin's? It was. Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't Kevin's, but it might as well that have been. been. Funny as shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this was an awesome one. Yeah, yeah one of our Holy faves, cow. Steve. Uh, okay. We've wanted to have you on forever. We greatly yeah. appreciate you taking time out of your day. Uh, check out his new show, Tacoma. FD. FD. True TV, March 28th. Uh, if it's like any of your other projects, you will not be disappointed. Thank you, man. It was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, my great, pleasure. Great show, my man. pleasure. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.